All right, guys, some very interesting stuff just came out a few minutes ago. The Quick Gameplay Thoughts, February 7th edition. This is where Riot kind of explains what's going on in their minds, what they're planning on doing, how they feel the game is going currently, and just overall stuff like that. And there's some very interesting stuff, uh, to say the least, as you guys can see by the title and the thumbnail. So let's just go into it really quick. We're going to go over it and just kind of like really... Um, just figure out what everything means. So, quick gameplay thoughts 7th. Scruffy, here was some insights to our gameplay direction and upcoming changes. So, yeah, gameplay direction and upcoming changes. So, balance framework fine tuning. We've been working with a standardized balance framework for over a year and we're consistently looked to tweak and improve it over time. The Summoner's Rift team has a small but hopefully meaningful set of changes that we've been testing this year and are going to use forward. So they're basically saying they're going to make small changes to how they're balancing the game. And this is based off of all their ranks. So, you know, for most people, iron to gold. For both normal and skilled play, uh, skilled play, we're tightening the OP line a bit after looking back at the full year 2019 and seeing that we trended towards buffs over nerfs. Ideally, we find the right balance so that we don't have to, so we don't have power increase or decrease over time. And this makes sense, right? Because especially in... Um, non-competitive play i guess your casual gameplay there is a very different way to balance the game like you're not going to have iron to gold players that are going to be destroying people with any version of a quality because she's too hard uh whereas lux might be too strong with higher stats because you know she's just too easy to play so you know you got stuff like this where old if op if 54.5 percent win rate if less than average ban rate uh so basically you guys can pause for this, stuff like this, but an example would be uh, our new system flagged Diana for nerfs in 10.3 uh, and had a 53.7% win rate, 23% ban rate, which we not now got from the old. Okay, so basically they're just, they're trying to tighten the line. And then for plat to master, which is like, you know, good, but not insane. Um, they're just, I think they're carrying a little bit less, but same thing. Uh, elite play, like for like almost pros. Uh, no changes at this time, but we're working on ways to have more game data-driven system here. Our current usage of picks and bans is approximately correct, but we think that we can get a more accurate picture of champion balance with game data like win rates here. So this really, there's not enough games in this ELO to get much information, honestly. Um, people still troll a little bit too, so it's like it's already a small sample size, and then people are just like trolling around. Um, either way. So you've got the pro play, uh, unlike elite play, we think that pick and ban data here uh, provides a very good representation of champion power. Uh, we're still tweaking this a little to reduce the amount of patch notes for pro during most of the year and then amp up our focus as world approaches. So I think this is interesting. I don't think they want to word it this way, but they kind of have to balance towards pro play because that's what everyone is watching in terms of like esports competitive, you know, the, the whole world is looking at esports. And they don't want to see some ridiculous stuff, but they have to like really, really try to keep this as balanced as possible. Uh, whatever wording they use is just fancy, <laughs> fancy lingo. Um, but guys, this is by far the most weirdest, the weirdest part about, oh, just check this, check this whole thing out. Widening the jungle champ pool. When we were digging into our results and follow-ups from this year's preseason, we were really struck by a problem in the jungle role that we'd never been able to fix. Throughout League's entire history, low elo players have preferred the jungle position at uh, least of all five positions. So it's been the least preferred role in low elo. Uh, jungle was not popular in low elo. Regardless of whether jungle is strong or weak relative to the other four positions. Because, you know, low elo players don't know. But that's pretty obvious. Okay. We think that this will take a variety of changes to fix in the long term, but we also want to do some short-term work to improve jungle appeal. In 10.4, we're going to try adding a handful of champs that we and you love into the jungle pool. This is just like the funniest way to phrase it. Anyways, we're, we'd be doing very focused changes that buff these champs' jungles, clears, but leave their lanes unchanged. Not all of these may ship, but here is our current list. Garen. We're also doing some light changes to make bruiser items more viable compared to attack speed builds. So... Okay, they're making changes to Garen, not the not the items themselves. Um, wait, light changes to make Bruiser. So they're they're not saying they're making Bruiser items better to appeal to Garen more. They're saying that um, they're changing Garen so he scales better uh, with those items. Diana, 
Zed, Talon, and Darius. Um, so you got Garen and Darius, which are like two of the most noob-friendly champions in the entire world, which I think is absolutely hilarious. Um, anyways, let's continue on with that. Um, you got, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. You got freaking Garen, Diana, Zed, Talon, Darius, just, I mean, you can definitely speculate what they're going to be changing. I think it's very clear that Garen's spin is going to do increased damage to jungle monsters. Diana, probably passive increased damage. It's it's all these things that are very slight, and you can kind of predict it. Like, the Talon, his passive is going to work on uh, jungle, mo on, you know, large monsters, Zed. Uh, I'd imagine his Q does increased damage. Th this is something that a lot of champions already have, but they it seems like they really want people to like jungle more in low yellow, um, or they want to make it more noob-friendly. Because, I mean, back in Season 1, Season 2... It was literally, if you didn't know how to play jungle, you picked Fiddlesticks or Warwick because they were the easiest in the world. They were so simple to play. So I'm pretty sure they just want more people to have, they want more noob-friendly options like, hey, you don't know the jungle? Go play Garen. Um, anyways, so that's that. I I am very, like, I am very just, like, when they say um, buff these champs jungle clears but leave their lanes unchanged, that's just like they're gonna buff like it's a pretty big buff to make a champion be able to jungle that wasn't able to before and i'm very hesitant to say the least because it's just gonna make them so much stronger top lane or mid lane like if diana and zed would already have good wave clear and talent as well they push the wave then they go take blue buff in five seconds instead of 15 or um because you know zed's not like the best buff taker um or diana can take raptors in probably six seconds with one item um instead of i don't know 10 like it's just it's gonna be snowballing them even harder and considering you know if you look up a little bit at diana's um high win rate you know it's just gonna make her win rate increase more so it's kind of like an interesting like it's like there's a pro and a con there's a it's like a double-edged sword so i really don't know if that's the best way to go. But you know what? They're going to bring it onto the PB. They're going to test it. Um, and we'll see how it goes from there, right? Because, you know, maybe it turns out they're broken, but maybe it doesn't matter. Uh, anyways, we're moving on to Soraka in solo lanes. This is something that, in case you've been living under a rock, is just been so broken. Um, it has the highest win rate in Korean Challenger. Soraka top. Korean Challenger. Highest win rate. What? It's a support, but... It just people found out, and I'm, I'm just going to read this first and I'll explain why it's broken. We're working on some targeted nerfs to Soraka to prevent her from being a dominant pick in solo lanes with a pretty low quality game experience. Yeah, she's just, she throws Q at you, and then late game she's a broken support. Her self healing Q pattern Q was built to be risky and semi reliable against ranged opponents, but in the 1v1 versus melee, it's, too, it's low risk and too hard to dodge. Indeed, it is. So they could make it slower, they could they make her Q fly slower, they can do a lot of stuff. Um, but yeah, basically, Soraka's just the best lane bully because her Q healed her and gave her like a burst of movement speed. I think I'm not sure about that part, but it just healed her and melees can do anything about it. Her silence was broken. And then she, with her insane healing, she just transitions into this, in, this this god mode support who has more levels than a support would all the way down sharing with experience with uh, marksmen. So it's just, it's just this huge problem. It's just this huge problem. So... Um, moving on, we got more Aphelios follow-up because, you know, Aphelios has been having some issues. Um, everyone hates him. You know, it seems like every champion that one guy makes, um, uh, I forgot his name, uh, just, he's just always so controversial. Uh, certainly T, I think. Uh, he reworked Akali, he made Zoe... Uh, as far as I know, and he now he's Aphelios. These are all just like the most stressful champions in League of Legends. Um, I think, I wonder if we could say like we can contribute X percentage, like this really high percentage of players quitting the game to him just like being in charge of stuff. I don't know. I I, yeah. I don't I'm not, I don't mean to sound salty towards the Akali rework either. Uh, truthfully, I just think it's just all these champions are so uh, crazy. They're so crazy and like cool and innovative, but they're just with that comes a lot of stress um, of dealing with them, playing against them. Anyways, more Aphelios follow-up. 
few more changes that should be coming to Aphelios in 10.4 to increase the clarity playing against him and overall bring him to a more balanced state. Better understanding of his guns, we're adding his offhand gun icon to his health bar. Less surprising R's, we're lowering the range on his R and amping up the color differentiation, differentiation, I don't fucking, uh, so that you can better tell when an R is coming and what to do. I like that. I think the R has way too much range. Um, more clear turret threat. We're looking into ways to make this turret visuals convey their actual high threat so the players react. With it. Yeah, they're like, yeah, that's so true. Aphelios' turrets are the most innocent looking thing ever, and then they just two shot you. They literally two shot you, and it's not it's like a it's not like a one two. It's like a one two. You're just dead. It's it's stupid. Um, anyways, he seems to be still be strong even after ten point two. Uh, so we're gonna do another set of nerfs to put him in a better spot. And they're just like being like, okay, straight up, we're nerfing him too. On top of all of these like visual nerfs, uh, we're nerfing him. And then last thing, Sunfire Cape improvements. Sunfire currently is a bit underpowered, giving us the opportunity to buff it in ways that improve the tank experience in the late game. Damage focus classes scale up with items in a way that speeds up their ease in farming patterns. While tanks can still struggle to clear after multiple items, that's very true. Our current changes in testing are amulet burn, the fire burn, is increased by 1.5% of the wearer's bonus HP for 4 seconds. Ooh, 1.5. So if you have like 3,000 bonus HP, that's a, that's a good amount. For 4 seconds after you apply the an immobilizing crowd control okay so you press you have nautilus with a ton of health you auto them you immobilize them and then you just burn the crap out of them and that's i'm sure that works for minions too so dude nautilus might actually be a really good wave clear now um and then finally stopwatch everyone in challenger hates this uh currently we believe stopwatch is used too often by a wide range of champions in the typical game yeah because 80 carries with no ap scalings are getting zonias uh this leads to both a feeling of homogenous Play powers. What does what does homogenous mean? Is that like milk or something? I don't know. Um, across every champ, but also it can be too good at stifling actions and negative negating bursts. We're looking into how we want to change, re uh, reduce its presence in the upcoming patches. I think that'll be a tough one. That's just gonna they're gonna have to maybe get rid of it or just nerf the crap out of it to the point where it's not good. I'm not really sure how they can change it, but you know what? They that's what they're paid for. I'm I'm not paid to do that. Guys, that is going to be it for this video. This is the last video where you'll see my recording thingy because <clears throat> I'll have my second monitor set up in a few hours from now. Um, guys, please be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. It helps me out a ton. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and more videos coming soon. We're finally, finally back. Have a good one. Peace.